Hey, good day, and welcome to this, the graphs of derivative functions. Derivative. Now, why do I say it like that? Well, when I was at university, we had lectures that, par that dealt with partial derivatives. And after about six weeks of derivatives, you can't really do anything else other than roll your R's. For those of you who are being taught by me, please ensure that you have a go at those questions from the Cambridge Essentials textbook, which is fabulous. For those of you who are watching from internet land, hey, how are you? Welcome. Have a fabulous day. Um, you're obviously here to look about derivative functions. Right. What is a derivative function? Well, derivative is something to do with the differential. So when you're doing a graph, if you remember when you differentiate, you are finding the gradient of the tangent to a point. And as you move around that graph, the gradient will probably change. Unless, of course, it's a straight line. Well, you can then graph the gradient of that function on its own graph. And that's what we're going to deal with today, graphs of the derivative function. So, as is always good, apparently in education, a little bit of a recap. So here is my recap. And we've looked at, obviously, how using the mechanics of differentiation. So if you had, as I say here, y equals 3x squared plus 5x minus 4, how you can differentiate that. So it's lovely because it's no chain rule or anything particularly complicated. And we just say, well, that's 6x plus 5. So this would be my original function. And a very quick sketch, and this is probably going to look nothing like the actual sketch, but you know, you might end up with that. But what it's suggesting is, because this is a quadratic, how do we know it's a quadratic? It's got a floaty 2. We know that when we do the graph of the gradient function, we end up with a straight line. So if I was to then plot that on the same graph, it would go something like that. And very much a case of these graphs of differential functions can be really, really helpful to us later on in the course. So, hmm, remember, to find the gradient of a tangent at a point, we need to be given or consider that x value. So, if we are, for example, wanting to know the gradient at the point 2, 20, the only value we're looking at is that 2. Hence, at that point, we would know the gradient of the tangent at that point was 17. For example, using the equation we had before. Now, in later sections of the course, and importantly, sex, it is important to know that the gradient might look like. So here we go. Here is a basic derivative function. Love the graphs by Desmos. Those of you who do not know what Desmos is, really, really should use it. Desmos.com. It's a great graphing application. You can get it to do all sorts of interesting things. And sometimes I think it's quicker to be able to do that than use your CAS calculator. If you're over there in the UK watching this, you're probably going, what on earth is a CAS calculator? Don't ask. Over here in Australia, life is fabulous. They get calculators that pretty much do all the exams for you. Shh, don't tell anyone. It's not cheating, really. So imagine this is my original function. Right? So this is my function of x is equal to 2x plus 5. Now we know that this is in the form of y equals mx plus c. Right? It's a straight line. We know that. Which means that the value in front of the x is my gradient. Reading off from the graph, what do we see my gradient as? Yeah, 2. And what that suggests is that if I take the gradient at any point along this line, the value of that gradient will always be 2. So I'm just going to write m equals 2 quite a lot. Everywhere along that line, the gradient is 2. So if we now draw the graph of the differential function, it's saying, well, have the value of x along the x-axis by all means, but now we are going to plot the graph of y dashed. Not overly clear there on that graph, so I'll just do a y dashed. Well, what do we know about the gradient at the point where x equals 6? Well, it's 2. We know that. Sorry, x equals minus 6. It's 2. We know that, so I'd put a cross at 2. What do I know about the gradient at the point x equals minus 4? It's 2. What do I know about the gradient at the point I don't know, x equals 0? Uh, it's 2. And 2. And 2. And so, hence, when I draw the graph of the basic derivative function for a straight line, we would be expecting a line having the equation, in this situation, y equals 2. Doesn't matter what x value you put in, your gradient at that point will always be 2. So this is the basics of what we're going to do. Now, sadly, in methods, you're unlikely to get basic derivative functions of straight lines. So let's have a look at sort of a basic quadratic function. Something that's really, really important to note here is this uh, concept of what we call turning points. 
Now, when we've had sort of year 10 and uh, chapter 1 of the Cambridge Essentials textbook, you would have been asked to solve quadratics. And more so in methods one and two and three and four, we're very interested in something in the turning point form. So we would use quadratics and completing the square to help us put something in turning point form. So you may have had y equals three, x minus two, all squared plus four. And we like that, because what it tells us is my turning point would be in this situation, be it two comma four. Now, none of this has anything to do with the graphs I'm just doing, because obviously you're looking now and saying, well, hold on, the turning point of that graph is zero, zero. I'm just talking generally. So this turning point is very, very important in two different ways. One, it shows us where the graph changes direction. But two, we can describe our graphs now in terms of maximum or minimum points. And a maximum is where our graph gets and turns and looks like that. And a minimum is where our graph looks and turns like that. So that's really, really important to us. But another really, really important piece of information is if you look and draw a tangent to the point of a maximum, and that missed it completely, and a minimum, just at that point, just at the turning point, my tangent would be a horizontal line, which would tell me then that the gradient at that point is zero and the gradient at that point is zero. And that's really, really important. So wherever I see a turning point, be it of a quadratic or a cubic or a quintic or a quartic or anything along those lines, we can automatically put a cross at the point zero. So here is my original graph. This is x and this is y. And my function is basically y equals x squared. We can see that. It's a nice parabola. I've now said, well, here is my minimum. Here is my turning point. Its turning point is zero comma zero. So when x is zero, my gradient in that situation is zero. So I can put my first point. The next question goes, well, now let's consider a point here as we go along my graph. Well, if I was to draw a tangent there, roughly speaking, what would I notice about my gradient? Well, the first thing to notice is it's going to have a positive value. Let's have a look at this point here and draw a tangent. What do I notice? Well, once again, the gradient is going to be positive, but it's going to be more positive. This value here is going to be more positive than that value there. And likewise, as we continue around the graph in this direction, we notice that not only are the values positive, but they're getting more positive. Well, let's look. So what we're actually saying is, as my x increases, my y increases. Well, that sounds fairly awesome, because what I'm now saying is for my differential function, as I move along my x-axis, I should be increasing along my y-axis, which is why this part of the graph goes up. Starting from this point zero, zero, or rather passing through the point zero, zero, it goes up. Right, okie dokie. But how do we know it's a straight line? Well, if you think about the general idea of, you know, this is where you have to think about what you're trying to get to your answer. If we have y equals x squared, then we should know the differential is going to basically be y equals 2x. That, we could effectively just use that and draw that straight away in our graph. That wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. But what I'm saying is, when we start with a quadratic, in this situation, my uh, derivative function will be a straight line. So I can now absolutely guess that it's going to be a straight line. What about on this side of the graph? What about on the left-hand side of the point zero, zero? Well, again, if I draw a graph here, oh, sorry, draw a tangent there, I notice it's negative. And another tangent is negative, and another tangent is negative. So all of the values on this side of my graph are negative in terms of tangents, so they would, uh, in terms of differential, so they would all be below this x-axis. But as we get closer and closer to the point, what do we notice? Well, this will be big negative, and this will be sort of smaller negative, and then smaller negative again. So as we move this way on my x-axis, what we're noticing is my y values are getting smaller and smaller as well. So as we move this way, we notice the graph gets closer and closer and closer, and hence that describes our straight line. What I'm using here is basically the theory behind how I do these graphs all the time. It shouldn't really matter what graph or what function they give you. You should be able to use the important information like, so for example, if I had something like a cubic, 
the first thing I look at is my turning points because at these points here I know m equals zero. So I would read off my x value there and I would read off my x value there. I would draw my gradient function directly below. There is my x value, there is my x value. So I automatically know that it's going to have a gradient of zero and zero. This looks to be a cubic. And when I differentiate it, I'm going to end up with something that looks like a quadratic. Oh, awesome. So if I know it's a quadratic, now I know my graph's either got to look like that or it's got to look like that. How do I know which one it is? Well, look at the values here. I have positive gradients there, and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They must be, because by the point here, by the time it gets here, it has a zero gradient. So, as I'm moving closer this way, the values of my gradient are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I already know it's going to be a quadratic, so I don't need to have too much more information to know that that's effectively what my graph is going to look like. You'd obviously in an exam be expected to write the values of these coordinates and any turning points. But, whoa, a lot of talking there, but this basically is a graph where we've taken both the basic quadratic function and its derivative function, and I've just drawn them on the same graph. Why? I don't know. Obviously, has some real estate to fill. Sometimes in the methods exam, they will actually ask you to draw them on the same point. And here we go. There's a more complex example of a quadratic function. The theory is exactly the same. This is my original function. Here is y, and here is x. That is obviously written in turning point form. So just reading this straight away, I know that I have a turning point of 1, 2. Does that make sense? There we go. There's my turning point of 1, 2. I automatically know at any turning point, if I draw a tangent there, I get a gradient of 0. So at the point on my derivative function, and this is now both, but I'm going to pretend that red line's not there, I now know when my x value is 1, because I have a turning point, I can now put a coordinate at 1, 0. It's a quadratic. So I know that originally it would be an x squared, which means that my y dash would be effectively a straight line. So I'm looking to draw a straight line. I just need to work out, does my straight line go up or does my straight line come down this way? How would I do that? Well, I investigate on the left-hand side and the right-hand side a few values. There is a gradient, there is a gradient, there is a gradient. They're all positive and they're getting bigger and bigger positive. So as I move that way along my x-axis, this way becomes more and more positive. Hence, that green line is my straight line. Ooh, cubic functions, I've already done one of these. So let's just check that what we were doing was around the right theory. All right, so what do we have here? We have the cubic which has intercepts at 1, minus 2, and 3. 1, minus 2, and 3. Thank you very much. Does that make any difference to me? Does that actually matter? No. So I'm just going to do this as f of x. And let's do this as x. Let's do this as f dashed of x. Just to make it right and x. So the first thing we do, what do we do? We look for turning points. So at these points here, I have a gradient of 0. Thank you very much. So m equals 0 there. That gives me an x value of about 0 0.8. And there we go. So 0. Point, wow. Couldn't be any more specific here. Desmos is great. It's actually giving me the crossing points. So about minus 0 0.8. I've put a 0. And what is this value here? It seems to be just slightly 2.2. Uh, or 2.12, so there's my value. Ignore the red line on this second graph. Ignore the red line on graph number two. That's just overlaid, just to show you what it looks like. Again, what do I need to know? I now know that this is a cubic. Right? This has a cubic form, which means that the graph of the differential will have a quadratic form. Off the top of my head, I know a quadratic is only going to take two shapes, that shape or that shape, and so I've just got to try and work out which one it is. Choose a side of a turning point. So as I look at my points here, I notice they're getting they're all positive gradients, so positive, 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 but they're getting less and less positive. So as I'm moving this way towards my turning point or towards my zero gradient, I notice that my values are positive but getting less so. And so that must mean that this graph here is the general form of my equation. I can draw that on 
and I would have to make sure that I uh, label this point here. And for some reason, my graph has not labeled it, but the good news is I can read off my graph, and that gives me... I must make sure that I label this section here, and the good news is I can read that value directly off my graph to give me 0, minus 5. Always, always, always in an exam, make sure that you do uh, intersection, points of intersection of x-axis, y-axis, and generally speaking, any turning points. Make sure you know what the question is asking you. Hybrid functions are really important, and this is the last section here. All right, we can use the process to help us draw graphs of derivative functions for hybrids. If you remember, a hybrid function is just a way of writing a graph that's split up into a number of different sections. So we have the graph of x for values of x is greater than 0, and for negative x for x is less than or equal to 0. Now, a lot of people say to me, does it matter where you put the less than or equal sign? No, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't, just as long as you don't replicate it. If I did that then unfortunately that would very much be wrong because you can't have both uh, values including zero. So there is my equation, there is my hybrid function, and all it says is on this side of the point zero, the graph is minus x, and on this point, the graph is x. What do we know? Well, they're straight lines, so straight lines are y equals mx plus c, and in which case that would mean that this has a gradient equal to negative one, and this here has a gradient equal to one. So hold on a moment, what happens here? Well, that's the trick. Now, for a point to be differentiable, and there's a little bit more coming on this later, we have to make sure that as you approach the point from both sides, that the gradient gets closer and closer and closer to the same value. Please don't think that this here has a value of gradient of zero. That is not true. So as I get closer and closer, to this point here, what do I notice? Well, the gradient is always 1 on this side and is always minus 1 on this side. There is no gradual getting towards the gradient at a point. And so that actually at that point there, at the point 0, 0, there is no differentiable. That point 0, 0 isn't differentiable. How do we show that on a graph? Well, again, we know to the right-hand side of 0, we get a gradient of 1. So I just draw a straight line from you know, 0, 1, all the way across. I know the values of the gradient on this side are all negative 1. And so here is my line, y is equal to minus 1, y equals to 1. And because we know now that there is no differential at that point, there can't be, then what I do is I do an open circle. And that open circle is in both of those graphs. You don't do an open circle in one and a closed circle in another. Uh, regardless of what this says here, you cannot differentiate at that point. Right? So hybrids are an interesting one. We come back to differentiability in a, in a short while. But, ladies and gentlemen, whoo, I think that pretty much concludes our lesson on graphs of derivative functions. Thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. It's been so great having you watch this video that I'd like to see you again and again and again. Wow, we could make some amazing maths together. So, if you'd like to, and you'd like to be updated as to when I upload new videos, why not subscribe by clicking the button on the right. Otherwise, if you want to click and see another video created for this type of series, then click the video on the left. Alright, well, you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you again.